Grace Biolabs invented the methods for producing thin film nitrocellulose slides in the 1980s, and our on-site film slides have become the surface of choice for many protein array applications. A great example being reverse phase protein arrays. Now for simplicity in today's discussion, I will refer to porous nitrocellulose film slides as on-site PNC. Primarily there are three types of protein arrays and there are many microarray binding surfaces available and many of them are adequate for one application or another. Today I'm going to show you why on-site PNC is the surface of choice for all of these applications. First I want to take a moment to describe on-site PNC. There are many types of nitrocellulose out there, but they differ quite substantially. For example, membranes for western blotting and diagnostic test strips have nitrocellulose formulations designed for those specific applications. They're both thick membranes, but differ in their binding capacities, porosity, and wetting characteristics. On-site PNC slides are very different than these. This is a specialized formulation for use as a microarray binding surface. Unlike transfer and lateral flow membranes, on-site PNC is much thinner and the porosity has been optimized to give more controlled wetting and a very high binding capacity. When expressing protein binding per unit volume rather than unit area, you can see that on-site PNC actually has the highest binding capacity of these membrane types. This is a function of on-site PNC's porosity. For comparison, here are SEM images of an on-site PNC film and a lateral flow film. Many of the pore sizes may appear to be the same on both images, but please note the magnification differences. The entire structure of the on-site PNC shown here would fit inside one pore lateral flow film. The smaller closed pore of on-site PNC supplies a very large surface area, which contributes to its high binding capacity, while the larger open pore structure of the lateral flow film is designed more for rapid fluid transfer through the film. In addition, the formulation and pore structure promotes more controlled and uniform wetting better suited for microarray disposition. The fluid dynamics of on-site PNC was recently modeled by a group in the Netherlands. The data demonstrate the desirable wetting and binding characteristics created by this film's pore structure. The investigators found on-site PNC to distribute spotted protein evenly on the spotted surface and into the film with excellent vertical flow while limiting horizontal flow, perfect for higher density microarrays. More importantly, the surface of film slides is ideal for protein binding. It provides an irregular binding surface with many crevices and grooves where proteins can situate themselves, and the method by which it binds is non-covalent. Both of these characteristics provide an ideal environment for the preservation of proteins' three-dimensional tertiary structure and function. Due to these various characteristics, on-site PNC outperforms other commonly used protein array surfaces, including hydrogels and functionalized glass. On-site PNC has 500 times the protein binding capacity of these other surfaces. This can extend the linear dynamic range of functional assays nearly 100-fold. Additionally, we observe much better sensitivity with on-site PNC with a 50-fold lower limit of detection. These gains in performance are primarily due to the high binding capacity of on-site PNC and the retention of protein structure. But there is another phenomenon we call resonance scattering amplification 
which is inherent to porous film. The result of ERS is literally a built-in signal amplification method for enhanced detection. Florian will describe how this occurs in more detail in his portion of the talk and how we are using it for optimized detection strategy with porous film. All of these performance advantages make on-site PNC ideal for many protein array applications where binding sensitivity and specificity are desired. The high binding capacity of on-site PNC translates to a significantly higher sensitivity for reverse phase protein arrays. When compared to other binding surfaces, on-site PNC provides 10 times the sensitivity. This sensitivity is critical for many researchers who routinely use minute tissue lysates from tumors and looking for subtle shifts in protein phosphorylation states. Fluorescence as a label for immunoassays holds many advantages. It is widely used because of its high sensitivity, a large dynamic range, typically more than a million to one, and its relative ease of use compared to colorimetric and chemiluminescence detection. Remarkably, fluorescent emission is much brighter on PNC surfaces compared to glass. So let's see if we can understand why by examining the geometry of the film surface and how it affects our ability to detect fluorescence. In addition, fluorescence allows for level 3 multiplexing. Signal amplification can result in higher assay sensitivity regardless of the detection method. Due to the increased sensitivity with fluorescence, in many cases, one can bypass amplification and obtain similar sensitivity to colorimetric endpoints after enzymatic signal amplification. This results in a much broader linear dynamic range and can result in lower nonspecific backgrounds. More importantly, for some users, assay cost can be greatly reduced. In addition, no amplification allows for increased multiplexing options. This performance has made PNC films the surface of choice for RPPAs. Their use is growing rapidly in cancer research and drug discovery, and this technology has been validated for use in clinical trials. In addition to the high binding capacity, the ability of on-site PNC to preserve antigenicity makes it ideal for antigen capture assays. On-site PNC performs significantly better than any of these other microarray surfaces in functional capture assay. The improved signal-to-noise in this cytokine assay resulted in a tenfold lower limit of detection over any of these other substrates. Whole proteome serology screening is a perfect example of an antigen capture assay where on-site PNC is used extensively. Researchers right up the road at UC Irvine are doing some exciting research by screening whole pathogen proteomes for the profiling pathogen infection, the identification of biomarkers of infection, and the identification of potential drug targets for more effective treatments of infection. ELISA-type sandwich assays have been slower to transition into the microarray format, and many of the ones that have are primarily using functionalized glass surfaces. We have found that many users evaluating the performance of on-site PNC with sandwich assays are using methods and reagents more suited for glass surfaces and that this was really working against the benefits of PNC. One has to recognize that on-site PNC requires methods and reagents which are more suited to this surface. With many of the methods being implemented, these ELISA-type assays were resulting 
in high intra-assay CVs and very high backgrounds. So I rolled up my sleeves and I got in the lab. My team and I took great care to formulate reagents and develop methods for spotting, preserving spotted protein, and blocking on-site PNC to maximize its advantages. In the next few slides, I'll show you how, by optimizing these conditions, on-site PNC proves to be an exceptional performer for sandwich assays. Here are two examples of how to improve antibody capture assays with on-site PNC by optimizing spotting conditions. In many instances, the high binding capacity of this film is not being used effectively. Typical spotting concentrations for antibody arrays on glass slides are marked with the X around 0.1 milligrams per milliliter. As shown with IL-1-alpha, with on-site PNC, you can spot tenfold more capture antibody and achieve nearly tenfold higher signal-to-noise ratio. Additionally, choice of spotting buffer can play a critical role in effective protein binding and optimal spot morphology. Here are comparative spotting results between an optimized spotting buffer and standard PB. You can see for proteins like interferon gamma, protein aggregation is minimized and optimal spot morphology achieved. What happens after spotting is just as important as the parameters during spotting. This is a critical stage in the life of a microarray where proteins are subjected to an unnatural dry state and then expected to rehydrate and perform optimally. It's no surprise that many proteins don't like this. This is an example where we monitored spotted cytokine antigenicity over time with and without a protein preservation reagent. Without effective preservation, 75% of the spotted cytokines lost antigenicity in less than 200 days. With our preservation buffer, we retain 100% antigenicity over the course of a year. Finally, one of on-site PNC's greatest advantages can be its Achilles heel if this surface is not effectively blocked during the assay. Of course, this is true for all reactive binding surfaces, but it is especially true for PNC due to its much higher binding capacity. Many microarray users who have tried PNC have seen results similar to what you see here. With just plain PBST blocking, you get high backgrounds and inverted spots where the spotting material actually blocked better than the blocker itself. As you can see here, effective blocking can prevent this and give much lower backgrounds. In fact, many common blockers do not effectively block on-site PNC. Take the milk protein casein, which is an effective blocker for western blots. It actually results in increased backgrounds along with various other protein-based blockers. With assay optimization, on-site PNC is an exceptional surface for ELISA-type sandwich assays. We assessed multiplexed sandwich assays on PNC for various cytokines, and here's the performance for IL-6 and IL-1-alpha. The areas highlighted in blue are the specs for the ELISA antibody pairs in standard microtiter plate assays. The dynamic range for these assays are typically no more than two orders of magnitude with limits of detection between 2 to 5 picograms per milliliter. This is using standard methods with signal amplification. Using these same ELISA antibody pairs on on-site PNC improves assay dynamic range and sensitivity. The linear dynamic range of these assays on PNC is 3 to 4 orders of magnitude 
nearly double that of the microplate assays. The limit of detection was in the low to sub picogram per milliliter levels, and I have to emphasize that this was achieved with no signal amplification. On-site PNC indeed provides an ideal surface for protein microarrays, and I've shown some of the exceptional results you can obtain with this surface.